that I had a big knowledge and a skill gap. So if you're planning to, you know, looking for a career switch or looking for a domain switch, I think uh, MBA actually helps you, uh, you know, push through that and gives you more of an opportunity. Consulting is very dynamic and demanding. So you need to come up with really, really precise solutions. Hello and welcome to another interesting video that we have for you and in today's video we are going to dive deep into the minds of some of the people who belong to very different careers and then they decided that we do want to become consultants. Uh, with me today there are these three bright individuals who are sitting right now. <laughs> Tell our audience who you are, what have you done in life and what is your idea about consulting? I've done uh, my undergrad in history honours. From there, I had the opportunity to work with food and beverage giants in terms of dine out and swiggy. Uh, and I was predominantly in the marketing uh, field and later on towards the end moved to the product marketing side. Uh, whenever the name consulting came to my mind, it was always people with flashy suits who would go around to these big corporations who would have to dig deep and analyze the problems and would uh, give them solutions somewhat a uh, Harvey Specter but more from a corporate solution side rather than a lawyer. Super. Uh, Vidisha from Calcutta, uh, what was your idea about consulting and what were you doing before this? I was born and brought up in Calcutta and I did my uh, undergrad in BCom. So I'm from a finance background and since then I think I was always interested in the CA field. So I was pursuing my CA studies and during that period I was also working in an audit firm as a financial analyst and uh, that is when you know I was really interested to actually cater towards a consulting field because I feel you know when you're actually confined to a certain domain like a finance or an auditing domain there is not much diversity. So when it comes to consulting for me it was all about you know working on diverse projects. It could be consulting, it could be strategy, it could be technology. So that is what really intrigued me going forward and I felt that you know it can actually add a lot of value to your growth curve. So I wanted to you know look forward to that. Understood. And uh, what's your story? So I have a quite different story to say about consulting. I am Vaishnavi. I hail from the city of Oranges, that is Nagpur, Maharashtra. I did my engineering in computer science and after that I moved into the data and analytics domain. Over there, uh, when I worked extensively, I was fortunate enough to work for a client which is uh, one of the biggest market research firm in the world. And while working with them, I was exposed to working with the tech consultants that they have. So I have seen exactly uh, on a high level what consulting is, how consultants work and how significant is their business impact. And uh, the one thing that I noticed was that any typical successful consultant would have as a trait would be someone who is ready to learn and relearn as uh, they have to stay in the ever evolving market and something which helps them to uh, give the best solution forth in the diversified set of clients that they have. Let's talk about uh, your role. You mentioned that uh, you know you were into product marketing. Yeah. For those who don't have probably an idea as to what a product marketer does, so especially for someone who as a BA degree, right? How does one get into a role of a product marketer? That's question number one. And secondly, what do you get to do as a product marketer? I had a different journey as opposed to others. I worked predominantly in a paid marketing setup where it was more about performance marketing. There you get to analyze your product in its on its own. You see the segments throughout the app or your platform you can monetize and promote your clients. In the paid marketing side, I would go meet clients across uh, across the hotel dining industry, which vertical I was handling. Uh, clients such as Rosiate or the Accor Group, No Hotel, Pullman, I would go across to them. Uh, they would tell me, they would give me a formal idea that, hey, our revenues are not coming on these restaurants. What can you do for us? So I would do a comp set analysis. I would understand the market that they are in. I would understand the offerings that they would have. I would say that whether they have tweaked something that led to their revenues falling or not. 
and then come up to them with a marketing plan given them that we're going to promote you on social media we're going to give you these app uh, app we're going to leverage you on app through these touch points such as a home page banner or an in in app pop up and all these things and then go on to execute their campaign and give them a monthly report however on a product marketing side you have to work extensively uh, with other teams like there's a, it's a lot of cross vertical work that you need to do you're going to be involved with the product team where they, t- they you need to tell them that my customers or my customer insights tell me that the user is spending a lot of time on this page so we should build assets here which redirect them to the uh, product or to the vertical that we want to promote a simple example my last stand with swiggy on the home page when swiggy uh, acquired dine out it had to come up with a pop up right there yeah. now on the home page vertical it's really cluttered because there's instama everybody is asking for food. space correct and every vertical is asking for space but there are these banners that keep running right there we used to call them half cards and top up cards so on the top up cards right there you know on a weekend a user or a customer is more uh, looking forward to stepping out with his family or his friends and everything so you would place a dine out banner right there super uh, i'll move to you vidisha tell me what exactly were you doing so for example you were the ca finalist uh, as you mentioned in your uh, description and you know cas are seen as career options which has been there for ages right uh, but a typical ca's image is something that we know of right a person with a briefcase going into a company and doing some accounts work so was that uh, an image in your head as well or were you doing something else uh, in in the form that probably you were working and you were happy with the kind of work that you were doing sure so basically i was working in an auditing firm and i was working as a financial analyst so uh, i think a typical day in the life of a ca is you know if you are given a certain uh, say vertical you are actually working in that vertical for a considerable period of time so after a uh, say a year or two i think it does get monotonous because it's not as easy or flexible to switch if you want to get into taxation or you want to get into accounting or finance i think it takes but i think it also comes with its own set of i think uh, monotonous when it comes to the the kind of work that you get to do and that is when you can look for a lot of flexibility and i think with mba you get that opportunity where you can also explore other arenas be it consulting also the, that you have strategy you have technology so that is when i decided you know along with mba and ca i think this is going to be a very deadly combination super and another traditional uh, mindset with which a lot of students in india do uh, go to you know undergrad studies is engineering and uh, you know you were part of that what was your department and uh, once you were done with it help us understand what were you working on so how how connected was it with the learning that you have had and uh, what were the things that you were learning uh, in that process yeah so i did my engineering in uh, computer science and after that i moved to data and analytics domain over there i worked uh, in infocepts which is a data analytics uh, co- leading company in the uh, and it precisely works on only data analytics and ai I was fortunate enough to uh, work with renowned global clients one of them being a uh, leading market research firm the other being leading global luxurious retail client automobile etc yeah. I used to work as a business intelligence developer over there for more than 3 years and uh, my work mainly focused on data visualization and uh, data storytelling so to put it simply I used to work on taking clients data used to uh, build insights in dashboarding do dashboarding on that and then present it to the client for them to take better business decisions mm-hmm. and somebody who is not very familiar with uh, the space that it is today data driven space that we live in i think uh, i would like to put it with a simple anecdote that is of a puzzle if you imagine business as a grand puzzle where, and the pieces are spread across everywhere data analytics and ai becomes the puzzle solving companion and they kind of gather all these pieces fit them together and show you the bigger picture the same picture that holds the key to kind of uh, take have the ability to make smarter decisions in terms of business spectrum 
So yes, uh, data may disappoint, but data will never lie, which is why uh, data analytics and AI, these are the powerful tools in the world today to solve any, any business problems. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of this industry, have that ability to observe, analyze and synthesize data. All of you all are part of a one year program that you guys have taken up. Uh, and probably it's a call that you have consciously taken because of the fact that you have considerable work X with you, right? Uh, help me understand how it makes sense to somebody who has done a three or four year, five year work X to join a program and learn probably certain things that you already have learned or done in your workplaces. What extra does this particular one year course uh, get to you apart from, you know, opening up your networking opportunities to get into certain companies. I come from somebody who's almost got six years of work experience. So also, again, going back to my background, I'm just a BA and that too in history. So across my working tenure, I saw that a lot of opportunities were not presenting themselves because I did not have a lot of knowledge. I had a, in, in, in uh, simple words, I would say that I had a big knowledge and a skill gap that I was facing that let me not pursue a lot of opportunities that were presenting and uh, hence I saw it as the perfect time to pursue a further education and that to a B-School uh, uh, like a degree because I've been in the corporate field, I've been in the startup ecosystem and the next best thing would have been to get a degree to formalize it and learn more. While now coming to the one year course, this one year course lets you get back to the workforce much faster with updated skills which definitely helps you pursue the ambitions and opportunities that were earlier distant to you, but now are much more closer. Another reason uh, why people also come for this one year course is that this college is known for its data driven approach like analytics and also consulting and also a, a very hands on learning approach. This in itself provides us with opportunities to pivot our careers from what we were doing. Yeah. So hence, I thought that this was the best fit for me. It gets me back in the market quicker. It also updates me with new skill sets that I can approach. And like I said, new opportunities as they keep coming, I could grasp them and I did. So for me, I was very clear that if I want to get back to the consulting uh, domain, then I definitely need to get an MBA degree. Because coming from a finance background, it's not easy to instantly switch to consulting because there are certain constraints in that. So PGPM helps you, you know, enhance those skill sets and have, you know, certain set of knowledge regarding other industries that you might not have coming from a only finance or core finance background. Another thing that comes here is that we also had to put in a lot of effort. Like it's not just like being here yeah. in itself or within this B school, we have everything served in a silver plate. We, since we are also switching our domains from where we come okay. from, we had to we had to put in the effort on our own to grasp much more. We had to also, uh, given this one year course, it's a, pre, it's a preconception that it's really hectic and everything. No, I would say that if you can manage your time really well, you can ma balance between things, you have a lot of ample amount of time that stays back. Let's move on to something um, that probably a lot of you must have also thought when you decided to switch and do an MBA, which is the kind of jump that you probably would have in your careers. So getting into consulting means that you are probably looking at the salary that it also offers and the kind of perks it offers you as an individual when you are in the top ranks of, uh, you know, I, I call consulting probably is an aspiration for a lot of people because purely engineering degree doesn't pay you that well. It's something that we have uh, seen probably uh, when I was uh, growing up um, and I was in my school, engineering was a help. But in your mind, was it also there that, you know, if I keep on doing what I'm doing, probably my growth will stop at some point. And then I will not have the jump probably that my friend is having because he or she has a degree. Does that also play in the mind of students when they're making that decision? India is known to be the largest producers of uh, engineers. And uh, it works in both pros and cons. 
it has a if we say yes in engineering inherently is a very dynamic and highly interactive degree so if you extract every value from it like doing internships while you are and you get ample of amount of time like these four years you can pick and choose what your interest lies into what your fortes are and then build from there so yes for some people i think uh, having an engineering degree acts as uh, a good start to say the job they want to do but for most of them because india is the largest producers of in uh, engineers so it could not work i mean it becomes monotonous you feel that you are doing something which would help you to just survive but not thrive so in that case i would suggest that picking up a niche knowing that where your interest lies picking up a niche going into the depth of it and actually looking at what uh, what insights you can uh, build from that what expertise you can build from that invest into that and then get into the job market it would of course pay you well and open up various uh, opportunities that you might not even thought of so leveraging the engineering degree that you have would uh, of course be a boon for most of them and a different would act as a differentiating factor now of course i wouldn't say it's not a well paying sector but at the same time i would say that you know sticking to just one degree or one profession can stagnate your growth so when you're thinking of an mba program you're always thinking of growth so uh, an mba program helps you leverage that and also the kind of experience or the kind of knowledge that you already possess you know you can already add more to that so if you're planning to you know looking for a career switch or looking for a domain switch i think uh, mba actually helps you uh, you know push through that and gives you more of an opportunity adding to what bidisha is saying that uh, now that we live in a world where um, resources are open for learning we can approach to uh, channels like inside iim alt uni for us to explore the areas that are of our fortes the interest that we have into and also something which just for the sake of uh, experimenting say i am an engineer but tomorrow i want to go into the marketing space where shall i start with so i myself have enrolled for um, alt uni's uh, digital marketing course and i am finding it to be really interesting i've just started on it and it is given giving me a kind of uh, space where i'm just open to experiment and learn from it so as the competition increases with the amount of engineers per se that we have been produced today or any uh, background people but uh, what makes us relevant is the constant learning and relearning and unlearning that goes into it and also experimenting with what you like absolutely uh, and you probably come uh, pretty low at the uh, you know food chain as i call it or the, the i mean i'm just making it up but you know for a fact that you know unfortunately in our country bas are not looked uh, you know with a with a valor or with a kind of respect that we see right uh, if you are from a, a background like that is does your hunger get bigger in in order to prove yourself in getting into something like this and you know make sure that you know you make that significant jump and what is the significant jump that we're talking about if you can put that in figures there are people in this food chain who have excelled despite having a ba degree if you consider me i am your example yeah yeah no uh, but exactly i I've seen people who've done BA degrees in itself and who are right there working with industry giants in its field. Like uh, I've also been lucky enough to be around mentors or people who've come from the same field and who've excelled like anything. And also being in that startup ecosystem of dine out in itself, I think so. I was privileged enough to meet a lot of entrepreneurs, like even our founders, and also a lot of people beyond these. Also, I've interacted with a lot of founders and everything. and one thing that attracted me irrespective of what their background was that hunger like you said that hunger to grow big and i think so i picked it up from there where for me it was not in terms of a financial growth in itself but it was more in terms of uh, making a difference in the organization in itself now if i talk about a career switch yes definitely consult like the financial world like the the financial institutions and the if you're in consulting they do pay well and they significantly pay more than other a few other fields uh, i'm not demeaning that the other fields are not important in itself and everything 
they they are a bit low uh, low hanging in this food chain like you said do you get to negotiate as well brilliant uh, lakhs worth of money is sitting right now with me all of you are going to be consultants working in different companies when you are joining a company um, after a program like this what usually is the kind of role that you get uh, from here what are your you know first six month challenges going to be if somebody is trying to understand what kind of you know work they would be doing for here so before you come to the job in itself they give you a training docket you are pre pre trained to a certain level when you get when you are about to enter and once you enter of course then also you get a certain amount of training or at at the office in itself post that you are assigned clients you you start up with a client at the beginning and you they see how you're doing with the client in itself uh here comes a twist where unlike what a pre notion of a traditional consultant is like hey they just go and they just they just put their crunch their numbers do a problem solving will pass you a report or a ppt saying that you need to do this you need to do this and then they walk out here at traffic square it's more of an entrepreneurial journey like it's like where you're not only looking at the problem but you're crafting solutions tailored to the unique needs of your client mm. and especially in this intricate international business landscape your problems are way way diverse mm. so you need to come up with really really precise solutions work with them in executing them because you're not just writing a growth chapter of yourself in the in the company or for this company you're actually writing the next chapters of success for your clients and uh, yeah anything that you guys want to add any clarity that you have that you would be working on and how is it different from the idea that probably you had earlier what a consultant role could be so uh, basically when i came here you know there's this notion that you have to learn everything beforehand and that you have to be really good at it before you're joining the company for the role that you've been shortlisted for but it's only when i got shortlisted and hired for uh, in a consulting role uh, i realized that it is not the case because it's not possible for someone from you know a certain domain or background to know everything that is where the training comes into the picture because they're going to provide you training for example for me it's um, erp consultant so probably i'll be given training on sap and erp and i'll be shadowing you know for probably a month or two and get to learn the work because until and unless i learn and i know it myself there's no way that i can you know execute it or put it you know into application so uh, as much as you can gain knowledge and understanding of the kind of job role that you get into want to get into you also need to you know have a balance and understand that you will be given training you will be given the kind of experience that you are required to have before you try uh, you know with the uh, client facing role before you actually get to interact with your clients on a professional level so i think that really helps because deloitte usa as it is you know they provide a training for 3 months for a consultant role for you know a techno functional role for every other job role they provide you considerable amount of you know training so that before you start your job you are already a, an expert or a professional in that uh, domain so that really helps you yeah i think uh, for accenture it's a bit different because accenture does not give you uh, training but believes that you would learn on the fly and uh, i reckon that consulting is very dynamic and demanding reason why um, i see myself as a consultant who is solving problems which are challenging in nature and for that today i am working on case studies i am chiseling my uh, that aspect where i could actually show up when a problem is thrown at me i could solve it with strategy uh, both of technological and business acumen that i have i also see myself uh, traveling um, globally to interact with the clients and uh, with the people that are involved into the process also uh, i see myself as uh, someone who is working in diversified set of environment today i'm working for a client say from automobile industry tomorrow i'll be working for for someone who's in the retail industry and they would have their different set of industrial problems so that is that might be challenging but that is also what is thrilling to me tell me guys you know it precisely one year uh from now from your back from now when you probably were sitting at your respective desks working trying to figure out what to do or where to go from your next from there what has changed in your opinion uh personally professionally in terms of knowledge in terms of career doors that has opened 
what what probably has happened for the good or the worst in your life uh, in this in this particular one i think for me personally it has given me a lot of flexibility you know because you cannot always be prepared when you come here you have to be open to a lot of things you know you have to have a very open mind or open perspective because you cannot come with a certain you know a preconceived notion or a certain sort of perspective and not think of it as you know there are other ways of looking at it because there's a multi dimensional way of looking at you know a certain industry or a certain course so when i came here i realized that you know whatever i've learned or whatever i've had you know in terms of my work ex i have to leverage on that but i cannot stop there because i have to constantly upskill myself i have to constantly look for opportunities that i can you know leverage so when i came here i i just realized that the only way to go forward is to learn as much as possible because it's a highly competitive world you know every person that's come here they come from very diverse background with very different skill set and there are people who are way senior to you in terms of the work ex that they have which means that they are way more knowledgeable in the kind of domain that they have worked in so to be able to match up to their level of work ex or to their level of you know skill set you really need to put in that you know amount of hard work or effort that extra effort that will take you you know a long way if you have to be in the same room with them i think uh, adding to what uh, badisha said that learning is the key uh, and you should be a learner for life but this year has been a metamorphosis phase for me where uh, i have shared a lot of notions when i came over here i met people and personalities which are very different from me but all of them are right in a certain context so uh, the building on that emotional quotient has, has helped me a lot and i don't think i would have the learning which is intangible which uh, which has helped me a lot be it in classroom or be it after the classroom be it just being with them because they are so different and they are all, they have all come here from their own set of uh, fortes and weaknesses and that's beautiful that has helped me to grow because i was doing really well in my uh, career so far i'm a bit outside of my comfort zone where it's pushing me to re redefine myself i'm i'm looking at various things i have grown as a person i would say given the last 6 months that i've here i've learned new things uh we definitely have really good faculty but i would say that we've got even better peers amongst us who kind of push you to learn like if you're interested in something they would and if you approach them they would help you with that or going to have your highs you're going to have your lows you're going to be you're going to be at a point where nothing works well for you and also there's going to be a point where you're on cloud 9 so how do you balance all of that and take all your decisions and your thoughts and everything in a level headed manner i think so that's what this place is taught absolutely. absolutely great uh quickly very quickly before i wrap this video up what is it that you guys have in your bucket list now now that you are consultants now that you're going to earn a lot now that you're going to live the life probably that you have dreamt of and go to different countries to visit and work more than 70 hours a week so <laughs> what's what's in your bucket I think for me because consulting role comes with the perk of traveling and I absolutely enjoy traveling. So I think one of the biggest opportunity that lies in terms of consulting is the fact that you get to work on different projects be it you know in the country and also outside the country. So the global you know aspect of it where you get to interact with clients you know internationally I think that is very exciting and thrilling. So that is something I'm definitely looking forward to you know exploring that arena and interacting with different kinds of people working on diverse projects and of course down the line i would like to work for you know big 3 company because i'm already in a big 4 so you know maybe a mckinsey who knows so definitely that will be you know uh, on top of my bucket list and uh, i'm very thrilled you know to see what more is in store for me down the line so yeah for me uh, i have my bucket list is quite long but to precisely <laughs> say it uh, i would like to have uh, international projects it would give me an opportunity to not only travel but also know the culture of people that i'm working with uh, help me understand the personalities uh, that they have and and uh, i would also like to see myself the second one would be rewards and recognition i want to work hard uh, in the world of consulting i want to uh, know the alphas and betas and kind of build from there 
so yeah and the third thing is mentorship uh, because seeking out a mentor in not just in your personal space but professional space also helps you in a lot of ways and the the insights that you get from them who have been there done that so they are invaluable so mentorship is again and the last thing would be to enjoy my life having that work life balance though it's 70 hours uh -huh. but still finding uh, that equilibrium and kind of enjoying my personal life and professional life so i would say uh, growing with the firm that i'm getting into it's uh, it's in a very nascent stage that these guys have come up and i'm excited with the prospect that i get to be a part of their journey where they scale up and they take, and they're growing in itself and uh, yeah or uh, one of the things i would say that immediately in my bucket list is to equip myself with the kind of skills that would require me to excel at this job so for me it's more important to leave behind a legacy in whatever i do rather than looking at like a long term picture i would equip myself with the skills do better and grow with the form super yeah. thank you thank you very much guys thank you for being so candid and uh, talking about yourselves and talking about the plans that you have future uh, you know why we have these three people is because a lot of people think that uh, people from certain backgrounds don't belong to get into consulting and that's probably not true we have someone from humanity we had someone from engineering we had someone from the world of cas uh, and this is for you to understand that probably if you really manifest it it can happen with the right sort of training and with the right sort of uh, learning that you can have in your life and that's probably was something that we want to explore with these guys thank you very much once again for uh, you know talking to us and giving them perspective if you also found that useful share it with uh, your friends uh, do check out the link in the description below to know more about the program that these guys have gone through uh, and do tell us which are the other videos you want us to make in the same format that we have done today thank you once again and so much for having us it was wonderful thank, thank you. you so much